Happy 2021, y'all. We're back in the kitchen. I've got, I think, an interesting recipe for you guys today. Just kind of, you know, pulling information out of thin air. Recipe information out of thin air. Yeah, let's, uh, let's get going with that. So we're at the island. We're starting off at the island today. In the refrigerator, I have four good sized chicken legs um, in a Thai curry wing sauce. And I am using that along with some lime juice as a marinade for the chicken because today we're going to be making Thai curry chicken with spaghetti squash noodles and some pickled veggies. So for the, for everything else, most of the cooking we're gonna be over at the stove. I just wanted to kind of start here. Welcome you guys to 2021. It's our first video of the year, the new year. So great, right? We'll see. It's only, you know, been a, been a couple days. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. I've got a nice big glass of water, you know, New Year's resolutions and things, trying to get back into the to the drinking of lots of water. I realized that it's cold up here in Michigan, and even though there's some humidity, it's it's not anywhere near back at home in Texas was, and I'm feeling very like dried out, very mummy-ish, and I'm trying to to get back into drinking more water, and to go with the drinking of the water, I have decided that even though a lot of the recipes that I've shown to you guys here on the channel, they're not bad for you. Like they're, they're really good recipes, good for the soul, most of them. But I am trying to, as well as my husband this year, trying to lose a little bit of weight get healthier. It's not even really about the weight. It's just feeling better about ourselves. You know, Eric, he works uh, with aircraft. He's an aircraft mechanic. And there's a lot of heavy lifting, a lot of stamina that you need to do eight to 10 hour uh, shift days. And I want him to be able to do that without hurting himself and without just completely tiring himself out. And I wanna be able to run around with the dogs. I want to be able to, you know, wear more of my clothes other than, you know, sweatpants and shirts, sweatshirts. So that's what I'm gonna kind of start off on, uh, especially at the beginning of this year, getting into everything. And that's why I decided that I need to get a lot more veggies in, good proteins, and just flavor it up. Make really good recipes out of it. And like I said, this is not from a book. This is not from a website. This recipe, I literally, I opened the fridge doors, I looked around, I saw that we had some wing sauce, and I had pickles, pickled vegetables that I actually made uh, in September, September 9th is when I pickled them. There's jalapenos, onions, and uh, carrots that I did a pickling for. And they've been sitting down in the basement in my cedar closet for a lot of months now. And I really, I wanna break this open. You know, there's a seal. It's good and sealed. I wanna break this seal today and I wanna make some tasty stuff with it. More vegetables, make it taste good. Cause that's really what it's all about, right? Food is fuel, but it doesn't have to be sucky and lame and planned. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the chicken from the fridge. I'm gonna get a set over at the stove top and we'll get going on this recipe, guys. Let's go. Welcome to the stove top. I have a 10 inch frying pan skillet, whatever you want to call it, with nice deep sides, probably a good two, two and a half inch sides. I have the lid that'll go on top of this later. 
I've got three cups of chicken broth. I've got the remainder of our Thai curry wing sauce. I've got salt, pepper, normal stuff. And here I have the four good sized chicken legs that have been sitting and marinating and being delicious. Now, again, there's uh, the Thai curry sauce and there's some lime juice in here as well. Of course, that acidity is gonna help break down the proteins, make things real tender, give it a lot of flavor. So, I've got my pan on medium high heat. For those of you who have a number, like don't have a dial, you have to push the button to get the number, it's at a 7.0. I'm going to take a little bit of olive oil and make sure this pan is nicely doused. So probably like one to two tablespoons. So I'll put about one. I'm not gonna put that lid back on because that's silly. Okay, then you have tongs. And you're definitely gonna need it. I'm gonna do some longer tongs because I don't want anything splashing back at me and popping me. Because that's not fun. So I'm gonna put those to the side. We're gonna open up our chicken. It smells really good, even though there's, you know, raw chicken. So that's kind of the color. It is kind of a more like orangey turmeric color, and that's just because it's the curry going on in there. So everything is nice and settled. We've got the pan warmed up for the most part. I'm gonna give it another second. I'm just gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. So the chicken's gonna go in. I'm not gonna pat anything off. It's going in there wet. That's why I have the longer tongs because I don't want any of that, uh, the liquid coming off and popping me. After the chicken has been cooking, uh, and you probably want like five or six minutes per side because you're gonna wanna cook a majority of it, but then it's gonna kinda poach in the Thai curry sauce and the chicken wing sauce. And then, of course, salt and pepper just for extra seasoning. If you find that there's not enough salt or seasoning in it, I doubt that we're going to be needing any more salt. The pepper we may need a little bit of. So I've got, that's plenty hot now. I'm going to just go in with the tongs. That way I don't have to get a glove. So first chicken wing going in. Like I said, they're pretty good size. There it is. There's that sizzle. I grab the next one. Oh my gosh, I can already smell it. it smells really good. I'm gonna go ahead and put the next one in there. And the next one. And the next one. Okay, so that can be moved off to the side. And you see it's already kind of popping, if you can see, but it is already popping. Like I said, about five minutes on each side. When meat is ready to be flipped, you know, because sometimes if you try to flip it too soon, it kind of sticks to the pan. Hopefully that's not gonna happen anyway because these are non-stick pans. And I've got the olive oil on it, so that fat layer is kind of built up. But then it also, you, you also have the uh, chicken fat that's still on the leg. That's going to render out as well as you're cooking it. So that's going to sit. Once it's ready, like the chicken will actually be ready to flip, you'll be able, it'll release on its own. So you'll get a nice, good brown caramelized side especially with all this uh with the marinade on it and it'll flip another five minutes or so and then we're gonna go ahead add in a little bit more of the thai curry sauce 
uh, into the chicken broth. Again, I have three cups of prepared chicken broth, and I've been talking for like a minute or two, so probably another three minutes. So I'm just going to test this real quick. As you can see. Ow. Okay, that's what happened. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and flip them. You've got a nice caramelized egg on the, on the outside that's been sitting on the heat. So again, we're going to do another four or five minutes. It's 1031 right now. Yeah, it's late. Uh, so we'll probably wait until like 1035. Eight. So 35, 36, whatever. We'll do that. Okie dokie. So it's been sitting for about four or five minutes. I'm gonna kind of turn them a little bit more. I did turn down the temperature to about 6.0 just because I didn't want it to be too hot. I wanna make sure that you know, the chicken's not gonna burn on one side or the other. So they're pretty good. And then off camera, I made a flour and water slurry just so that I can kind of thicken up and make the liquids into a sauce. So now, and you're going to want to be really careful, you're going to add, and I'm actually going to lower this some more just while I'm adding in the liquids because, again, I don't want anything popping at me because that's going to be really painful. I'm going to pour a little bit of the Thai curry sauce on each of the chicken legs. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our three cups of chicken broth and very carefully I'm gonna pour all of this lovely chicken stock. Into there. And what this is now doing. It's also deglazing the pan. So anything that may have stuck to the pan. While I was just doing my cooking. That's going to be able to lift up off. Because I've got the heat. And everything else. So now that that's good and everything's added in. I'm going to just add the slurry. Now I'm gonna mix it in. And it's not a lot of slurry. It's not gonna make it super thick like a gravy. It's just gonna help it out a little bit. Make sure that that's all in there. It's gonna kind of make it go gravy. So I don't need to help it too much. I am going to turn up to about 6.5. So that's still on the medium high range. More towards the medium though. Get out of the way. Move that out of the way. I'm going to add a little bit of pepper. Just a, a couple quick sprinkles. Take my spoon, mix that in. Make sure to get all this juice kind of everywhere. And you're gonna be, it's, it's almost like basting. And you're gonna be doing this periodically while the, while the chicken is cooking. So I'm just gonna take my lid, pop it on there. And like I said before, this is not a recipe that I found. This is one I'm kind of making up as I'm going along. 
I don't know how long this is gonna need to cook for. So I turned it down another half, so now it's at six. I'm just kind of going and making stuff up as I go. Keep an eye on the chicken. I'll let you know how long it's gonna be cooking for. I'll probably check in for the next like 20 minutes just to see how everything's going like once or twice. At the 20 minute mark, I'm going to check the temperature and just see where we are. Remember, you want poultry at the thickest part of the meat to be 165 degrees Fahrenheit. That's when it's safe, that's when it's done. So yeah, we'll get going. So this will sit in here for about 20 minutes and we'll check up on it. All right, so it's been 20 minutes. I checked the temperature. I checked the thickest chicken leg and the thickest part of the thickest leg. And I came up with 170 degrees Fahrenheit. These puppies are done. So let me see if I can find. I'll just reach in with this. And I'm gonna take the chicken out. They should have that nice, really nice gold, golden brown coloring. And another way to know, there's a lot of bone. There's a lot of bone showing, because that meat, oof, that meat is just one to fall off. So this is what we have. That was really good. So at least that's successful. Um, so now we have kind of our sauce going. It's a little on the thicker side than when we started, so that's good. So I'm gonna let that bubble off a little bit more. I'm gonna rinse this out, and then once this has thickened up a minute, then I'm gonna go ahead and pour this in here just to sit. So very carefully, because you don't want anything breaking. There we go. So there. And it's funny you start off with like three cups of liquid. We're below two. So that's how you know a lot of it's evaporated off. And it's good to go. So I'm going to set this to the side. Same as the chicken. Now, there's still some left at the bottom. I'm going to grab our spaghetti squash that I made previously. And I'll talk you through making the spaghetti squash. It's really easy. All you have to do is just, when you have the spaghetti squash, before you do anything else to it, stab it a few times, make some fork holes, stick it in the microwave for like five minutes, Kind of get everything heated up, loosened a little bit, because then it's easier to cut it in half, and you're going to cut it in half lengthwise. At that point, I like to get a cookie sheet, uh, do the temperature 400 degrees Fahrenheit. After you've gotten your cookie sheet lined, I like to use like a silicone liner. Oven safe, keeps your, uh, your cookie sheet pretty clean. And then I take some extra virgin olive oil and after you've scooped out all the insides, cause you don't want any of the seeds or any of that pulp in it, it's like, it's like pumpkins. You're going to take and drizzle with some olive oil and then salt, pepper, and then turn it upside down. So flesh facing down, you're gonna stick that in the oven for 40 minutes. After 40 minutes, you're going to take it out. You're going to leave it to cool so that you can actually handle it with your hands because then you're going to take a fork 
and this is the really cool thing. That's why they call it spaghetti squash. You actually, you can take a fork to the flesh of the squash, and as you're going in and taking the flesh out, it strings. So it's like spaghetti. It's definitely, obviously, it doesn't taste exactly like spaghetti. That would be really cool. But it gives you that spaghetti alternative if you're, um, you know, if you're vegan or if you're vegetarian, if you have any gluten allergies, anything like that. Spaghetti squash is a great alternative. And I like it because it does give a little bit of that bite like you would al dente pasta. And it takes to whatever sauce that you use it with. It's really good. So I've got just that half a pan. So now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit more olive oil because I don't want it sticking. And this is already warm, so I'm not worried about it. I'm gonna get the pickles. So we've got our pickles. I'm going to put all of the, I'm gonna do this with a spoon. I'm gonna put all of the spaghetti squash that we have. And real, again, this is all cooked. So you don't have to cook it through. You just want to go in and really heat it up. There we go. So that's good. Now the time has come. Let's see if I can do this on camera without embarrassing myself. Apparently not. Give it a moment. Success. Oh my God. So I already get even, I haven't even taken the lid off yet. I literally just broke the seal and I can already smell and my mouth is actually watering because I love pickles. Anytime that I look at like, or like see a commercial for like any sort of pickles, I smell pickles mouth waters so oh, it smells so good because you can get that jalapeno like that pickle jalapeno smell oh that's really good so now what I'm gonna do let me see we'll just grab a slotted spoon and I'm going to make sure to get not only the jalapenos, but I'm also going to grab the onions, the carrots, and make sure to get it in there. And we're not going to use a ton because you just want that, that acidic crunch and that taste. That's good. I'm very excited about that. And I'm just going to run it in the hot pan with the spaghetti squash just to add that acidic flavor to everything. And it's almost like making um, a slaw, like a warm slaw, but with spaghetti squash. And then I kind of want to add a little bit of the gravy. I'm just getting in there. It's still hot. It's still very hot, but it's not cooking, cooking everything. So I'm going to, I really hope this turned out well. The pickling on the carrot is really good. And it's really cool because obviously there's been jalapenos sitting in it. 
so you get that jalapeno kind of bite along with the crunchiness that the carrots still are because they've been pickled you know they're still crunchy and then the the pickle with the gravy and the spaghetti squash makes the spaghetti squash really good so yep yeah. we'll be able to move this out of the way Take that off to heat to set, and I'll get everything plated up. Okie dokie. So I did go ahead and strain the gravy, and now I have it in this nice little container. No clumps, no charred bits. It's smooth, it's silky. I'm really excited. I have my little plate made. So I've got my spaghetti squash slaw, I guess we could call it. And then the little chicken legs. I'm gonna take a nice spoon, dip it into that gravy, pour a little bit on the slaw. Like I said, it's a warm slaw. I'm gonna give a little generous, little serving onto our chicken. I'm super excited about this. I'm gonna grab me a fork. It's still nice and warm. Can you guys see this? This. This, my friends. This beautiful bite of meat that I'm super excited. It's per cooked perfectly. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Like freaking wow. This is really good. A little bit of the slaw. Mm. And especially with a little bit of the gravy on it. It just kind of adds to the to the complex of the pickle. Mm. Still got a little bit of crunch. That chicken. It's freaking wow. Yeah. Okay. Um before I eat all of this on camera. I just wanna go through everything again with y'all. The Thai curry wing sauce, I think we got it from Walmart, probably. Yeah. So they have like these wing sauces that like in different spice levels. I think we also have like a buffalo sauce in there uh, I used a total maybe of half to two thirds of a cup, maybe at most. When you're doing the, the marinade, just kind of take a gloved hand or absolutely wash your hands afterwards. You're just going to kind of rub it into the chicken Get a little bit of lime juice, probably two tablespoons of lime juice and just kind of pour it over everything. Really get in there and massage the chicken. Leave it in the fridge. I think I had it in there for half an hour, 45 minutes. Obviously the longer that you leave it in, the more flavor it's gonna be. The acid is really gonna be able to break down the muscle fibers make just tender tender chicken the spaghetti squash i did it yesterday i think i did it last night and it will keep it will keep for several days as long as you're keeping it in like the the fridge or whatever the pickle pickle's super easy you can look online for stuff like that 
if you want me to do a recipe for pickling vegetables, anything like that, go ahead and leave a comment below. I would love to be able to do a pickle recipe for y'all because I want to try different kinds of pickles. I want to do actual pickles. Like I want to do like cucumbers into pickles so that we have some always in the house. But yeah, if you guys liked this recipe, the one that I kind of just like made up in my head, click on the like button, subscribe if you'd like to continue watching me flounder in the kitchen and come up with the randomness that comes into my head and things that I have in the pantry and the fridge and the freezer. Like this video, please. I love it when you guys like it. I love it when you tell me that you like it. It helps me figure out, am I doing this right? Should I continue in this general direction? Thank you. I now have 13 new, I now have three new subscribers from the last time. Uh, so thank you to those extra three people that subscribed. I really, really, really hope that I'm worth your subscription. I know you don't pay for it, but if I'm going to take up your time, you may as well enjoy it and I may as well do it right. Again, comment, give me some recipes that you want to try something that's yours, something that you came up and I'll try it. No big deal. I'll continue to come up with some recipes myself. And yeah, I think that's it guys. It's pretty tasty. I'm excited about finishing this chicken leg. Maybe moving on to the second one. Half of all this is gonna go to Eric for his dinner for tomorrow night anyway. So, the light just turned on. I'm gonna go before I continue just babbling on. Like, subscribe. Hit the notification bell for all videos if you would like to continue to see me being me. Bye guys.